are the first generation to really feel the effects of climate change, and we are the last generation that can do something about it. When I heard about the Clean Heat for All Challenge, it was like a Hail Mary Pass opportunity because this would have been a huge customer for us. We were a very small and lean team at the time and, and honestly still are. And so it felt like a long shot that if we landed, it would really change the course of the company. If you look at all carbon emissions, the heating and cooling sector is about 20% of all man-made emissions. If we're going to invest in climate change, the people who get benefits of that investment should be people who have the most to lose from climate change. And these frontline communities who are seeing heat waves, who are seeing extreme weather in the winter, what they need is an upgraded AC or an upgraded heating system. The Clean Heat for All Challenge was put together by NYCHA, NYSERDA, and NYPA. These are three agencies in New York State and New York City, and NYCHA is the New York City Housing Authority. They house one in 17 New Yorkers. So NYCHA said that they wanted heat pumps to provide cold climate heating and cooling. They wanted it to use a 120 volt outlet, which is super hard. And then lastly, they wanted the system to ideally not take up the window. Effectively, they wanted to take a pro-level cold climate heat pump and drop into the apartment and plug into the wall. And this hadn't been done before. When we begin an endeavor as difficult as this one, we generally start with schematics. We draw concepts of the thermal systems, the mechanical systems, the design elements that we want, and then we prove them out. We had to design this unit for all weather, which was a new challenge for us, hitting these really low ranges all the way up to low to really hot. That took a lot of thermal engineering work. One requirement we hold ourselves to, and NYCHA also was interested in, is how much air can leak into or out of the building once the heat pump is installed in your window. We had to come up with creative ways to visualize these air leaks, and so we used fog to kind of be able to see where we had leaks. We went from, I think, 300 cubic feet per minute of air leakage down to now we're close to 10 cubic feet per minute. At Gradient, we use R32 refrigerant because it's much better than what's typically used in heating and cooling today. So not only is it better for the environment and mitigates global warming, it also gives us higher performance and more efficiency. One of the NYCHA requirements was to have a non-drip unit because water normally comes out of the outdoor unit and just creates a puddle. And so we took on this challenge and decided to use atomizers to take the water that would drip and create kind of a fine mist coming out of the unit. One core feature of a resident's experience with their air conditioning or heat pump is the noises that it makes. And so we spent a lot of time testing and characterizing the noise of our product and changing things to make it quieter. The sound levels, uh, we were shooting for a target of around like 50 decibels and we ended up like undershooting that quite a bit uh, down to like, I think it was like 38, 40 decibels. One of the unique challenges for us was making the system so that anyone can install it. And one of the ways we solved that is as we went through the design process, we thought, let's make sure there's no way to do it wrong. So we spent a ton of time figuring out how to make this easier than an Ikea couch. And this is really important because you're asking users to take a 125 pound box and push it out their window. I got an email, it was just like any other day, and I got an email and my heart dropped a little bit. Winning this competition, we were all kind of speechless because in some respects we were the underdog. We delivered our uh, demonstration, our first 40 all-weather units to NYCHA in November of 2023. And within the first week of installs, uh, many of the residents 
<laughs> while we were still there, they came down with their electric heaters and they were like giving them away. They're like, we don't need this anymore. And one of the residents told me that because of the air filtration of the heat pump, her breathing has noticeably uh, improved. She told me that uh, she, she just has more energy. She was very animated when she told me. She was like, I, I'm so happy I can breathe better. They were so excited. Some people stopped me and said, thank you so much for doing this for my family. I'm so, so thankful. You don't know how much this means to me. And that was surprising and like really meant a lot. I grew up in a small town in Northern Ohio. Manufacturing was a huge part of the ecosystem. My grandpa, he worked in a Ford factory, and I always remember growing up, whenever one of my aunts or uncles bought a foreign car, he would get super mad at them. He always wanted us to buy American. A lot of my childhood, it was in this looming specter of like, are these manufacturing jobs gonna move overseas? So recently, Gradient was selected by the Department of Energy for a grant to build our own manufacturing facility in the US. This is really exciting for us. And I think if we're gonna invest in our infrastructure, it should be done in a way that creates jobs for the communities that need them. If you asked me statistically, if I was a betting person on day one of the company, would we get this far and would we have this big of an impact? Would we win this contract with NYCHA, with the DOE? I would say odds are low. I knew this was a moonshot from the very start. But also the other side of it is like, we have always been focused on the broader mission. Our goal from day one was always build billions of low carbon heat pumps and air conditioners, make sure everyone has access to them and doesn't have to worry about their impact on the environment. We had absolutely unreasonable goals from the start and I think we've got a chance of meeting them. <laughs>